Building your own PC can be a grueling task. There are many things to consider and people spend hours upon hours pondering what the best possible piece of hardware could be for them that fits into their budget yet also gives the best performance possible. But then it's much easier to pick something like a GPU where you can check the benchmarks online to see what level of performance you can afford. Deciding on a CPU, however, can be a much more difficult task. This is because the thing that gets most people's attention is the core count. So we're here today to help you get through this process by answering one very tricky question. How many CPU cores do you need for gaming? But first, let's see what a CPU core is exactly and what it does. A CPU core. Well, to put it simply, the core count determines how many tasks a CPU can handle at once. Back when you had a single core CPU, you could never truly multitask. Rather, what these CPUs used to do is quickly switch between priority tasks. But all of that changed when AMD and Intel released the Athlon and Pentium processors. These were the first multi-core processors to hit the shelves. But it didn't take long after that for core counts to increase exponentially. First with 4 cores, then 8, and today you can even find 16 core processors. Yet with such inflated core counts, it's very easy to get misled and buy a processor that you can't take full advantage of. So before we can answer how many CPU cores you need for gaming, we need to see what multi-core CPUs offer in terms of gaming performance. So gaming performance. It used to be that the difference between single core and dual core CPUs was much greater in terms of game performance than it was between dual core and quad core ones. This was because most games were made to run using only a single CPU core. But, as you can imagine, the situation has changed drastically since then, and now developers are always looking for ways to optimize their games and take full advantage of the high core and thread count of modern CPUs. And this means that you'll get noticeably better performance if your CPU has four or more cores. Although, if you're trying to hit the sweet spot in terms of gaming performance and price, then we suggest buying a quad-core CPU. Your performance will suffer if you opt for fewer cores, but conversely, having more than four cores will not improve your performance significantly and cost you much more. Physical versus logical cores. So another thing we have to take into account when discussing core counts are logical cores. This technology was first developed by Intel. They called it hyper-threading, and what it did was basically allow for a single physical core to perform two tasks at once, or act as two logical cores, if you will. AMD soon developed their own logical cores that function mostly on the same principle, but we'll spare you all the unnecessary details. After all, what you probably want to know is just whether logical cores are as good as physical ones, and the answer is a resounding yes you'll find a great number of staunch physical core defenders on the internet, and they'll sound like they're making sense for the most part, but a quick look at the benchmarks will prove us right. In fact, 7th generation i3 CPUs were shown to perform slightly better than 6th generation i5 CPUs, and the former are hyper-threaded dual-core processors, while the latter all had four physical cores. But with the popularity of AMD's Ryzen CPUs, all gaming CPUs were bumped up to four physical cores, even Intel's i3 ones. After all, actual performance only means squat if people buy your processors, and no one seemed interested in buying dual cores anymore, no matter how good they actually may have been. Still, this is definitely something to keep in mind if you're building a budget PC. Now, cores aren't everything. If there's one thing we have said over and over again on this channel, it is that on paper specifications don't mean diddly, and AMD's FX series of CPUs is the prime example to prove this. AMD resorted to insane core counts and raw power when they released these CPUs back in 2011. They released these to compete with Intel, but their technology soon stagnated while Intel's kept getting better and better. And by the end of its run, you had hyper-threaded dual cores that outperformed AMD FX CPUs with as many as 6 or 8 physical cores. And the same goes for clock speeds. The moral of this story? Always check the benchmarks. Bottlenecking. 
Now the final thing to consider when buying a CPU is whether it can keep up with your GPU. If it can't, then it'll limit the GPU's maximum performance and this is what is known as bottlenecking. Unfortunately, there is no reliable way to see just how compatible a specific CPU is with a specific GPU. Although the general rule of thumb is this, use i3 or Ryzen 3 CPUs for mid-range PCs, and i5 or Ryzen 5 for more powerful ones. Unless you're planning on running multiple GPUs, then you shouldn't really need a stronger CPU. Conclusion? So how many cores are optimal for gaming? As you can see, answering this isn't easy, even with all of the facts laid out before you. Up until recently, we would have been tempted to go with dual core CPUs as the optimal solution. But given that the cheapest CPUs come with four cores nowadays, there's really no point in getting them. It's highly unlikely that we'll get any more hyper-threaded dual-core gaming CPUs in the future, so the ones that you can get will most likely just bottleneck your GPU. That said, the bottom line is this. Do not settle for anything less than four cores for gaming. You can get more, of course, but it's unnecessary in most cases. And the only reason you should consider less is if you're building a budget PC. Although if that is the case, then you should also make sure you don't get too powerful a GPU in order to prevent bottlenecking. So what do you think? Do you agree with us? Or do you think that four core gaming processors will soon become a thing of the past? We would love to hear your thoughts down in the comments section below. And as always, if you have found this video helpful, make sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.